Rabbit Corner YouTube channel. As you know, we wanted to know correct information about the blockchain space. We're going to have an interview with Alejandro from BritBrit. How is it going, Alejandro? How are you doing? Going great, Mohammed. Uh, this is my first time in Istanbul, enjoying the event, enjoying the weather, the food. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic. How did you find the Turkish? Because it's your first time, you visit first time in Istanbul. How did you find the Turkish community? So actually, I know a little bit about the history of Turkey, uh, you know, going back to the Middle Ages and even forward. So um, I just love the, the welcome, the hospitality, the atmosphere. Uh, it's very calm and uh, yeah, actually reminds me a bit of Paris. All right, great. Before the start interview, could you tell us more your background and how long have you been working in the Web3 space? And uh, how, how, do you, how did you enter the Web3 space, I mean? Sure, so I entered the Web3 space back in early 2017 when I first bought my first Ethereum and Bitcoin. Wow. Uh, and then I rode the market up to December, lost all my money, uh, learned my lesson there, and that's what actually got me the following year during the 2018 bear market to get into the actual science behind the blockchain the technology. And I saw how valuable it was. So ever since then, I've been full-time Web3, and uh, yeah, here I am now. Great, you're, you're, uh, as you said, you're, we, can we say that uh, you're early adapter, right? Because you entered the 2017. I, I would like to think so. At the time, people were saying, "Oh no," but you know, looking back, and I could say that I was part of the the early wave. And uh, yeah, um, let's just say that it's been a wild ride, but a welcome one. And yeah. I think it's we're part of this humongous revolution. Did you get in rich at that time? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I said before, I I, uh, I rode the wave up. I held thinking that it was going to go up forever and I lost it. So that, that brought me back down to reality to really learn about the technology. Right. Let's talk about artificial intelligence and artificial intelligent future because our AI project nowadays very trend and mm -hmm. a lot of people they are investing the AI based project. Uh, what do you want to say uh, about this topic? Yeah, so um, what's scaring me in AI is we have companies like ChatGPT that are called OpenAI. Um, and to be sure, they were originally called OpenAI because they were originally an, a nonprofit. Uh, they weren't making profits, but the name in itself is misleading now because they're very centralized, they're making profits, and it's just a good marketing name. And the scary part about it is when you have companies like them and Google centralizing all the AI power, this powerful source, um, it's going to really threaten the livelihoods of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we want to create a decentralized solution that essentially would allow people to be compensated in our native token um, through that method rather than through a centralized project where the money only goes to the people in Silicon Valley and San Francisco and whatnot. Right, but could you tell us more what kind of problem uh, you guys solving in the Web3 and AI space as a bit rate? Yes, um, so currently we have 30,000 data scientists that we use um, for AI competitions. Mm -hmm. And basically how it works is we have companies that host us in the past, like NASA and SoftBank, and they host our competition. And these data scientists get to work to see who can create the best AI model solution for this company. At the very end of the route, uh, 2,000 to 3,000 solutions mm -hmm. are available for let's say NASA, SoftBank, whichever company is hosting it. They pick their, the model that they want the most, and then the data scientists get paid out fairly in our uh, compensate in our token. Uh, the great thing about this compared to other solutions is the fact that uh, we have a private cloud um, a repository that allows basically these AI scientists to work on the solution um, while uh, also securing the data for these, the proprietary data for these companies. Um, you don't really have this anywhere else across the Web3 AI uh, landscape. And so we're really looking to tokenize the value of not only the private data, but of the labor that these data scientists provide in creating these AI models. I got it, I got it. And are you guys planning to enter the Turkish community because you have a booth here? What do you think about this? Yes, yes, so our main uh, regions that we're focusing on are, since we're originally a Japanese company, are Japan, India, the United States, and UAE, because that's where headquarters is now. Um, but because we're here in Turkey, I've been already speaking with a few people here, and I'd be very interested in getting a Turkish university campus ambassador program star, that's something that we do, or just Turkish community in general. So that would be fantastic to have it in Turkish and native language to really pull the talent pool that is here in Turkey. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It was really, really informative conversation with you. Uh, actually, you have already answered my L question. Thank you for this.
as, as you said, if you would like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Do you have any Twitter account or something? Yes, you can follow us. You can follow us at BitGrid underscore global. That's our main company account. That's at BitGrid underscore global. And from there, I run the accounts as well. So uh, I can also follow you personally. If you want to DM, we can DM. All right. Thank you. See ya.